This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by L.A. Finch Fabrics. Go to lafinchfabrics.com and use code SSW5, that's SSW and the number 5, to get $5 off your order of $25 or more through the month of November 2018. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And I cannot believe that we haven't done an episode on this topic yet. This is... Yes, because I'm a firm believer in it, for a, one thing. Yes. An endorser. A sturdy believer. Yeah. Uh, An a advocate. Sturdy. I'm trying to come up with other... I'm trying to come Ston- up with... A staunch I'm believer. I'm trying to come a up with supporter. sewing furniture puns. And I'm... Ha- oh, it, does, it gives your sewing... A lift. It- <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay, so today it's we're going gonna- to stable table. Stable. St- it, it lends it's alliteration, sti- but I don't know. That's rhyming. Stable table. Well, and alliteration kind too. Of, I guess. I guess. I no, it isn't. You're yeah, right. Derek it's, said it's rhyming. You're right. It's rhyming. Alliteration is the set first sound. Like Derek tried to say that like something rhymed the other day, and it didn't. And he's an yeah. English major. Okay, I think. Like I do the word believe... choose and mouse yeah. or something. I yeah. was like, well, no. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but <laughs> there is definitely things that are linked to DNA, like <laughs> interpreting color and sounds. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, you anyway. just can't change people's minds sometimes. No, no, yeah. He anyway. I was like, it doesn't. He's like, well, it's a. I don't, I don't know. I tried to use some fancy word, and I was like, nope, just doesn't rhyme. I okay. So, moving on, sewing furniture. You never know what we might come up with, like during this broadcast, like left to right. Left to right. That's that was the best. Amazing. I love that. You are amazing. Yeah. Um. So, sewing furniture. Let's just go from the very. I don't know. Let's go from the beginning of like sewing furniture time. Let's let's talk a little bit of history first, right? And and, uh, you know, this is really funny because I just you know have that gate leg table. Yeah. Yeah. And. You were like, it's witchcraft. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> like, like okay, so this is a table that I actually put on a moving van when I, like, moved my aunt from Los it's Angeles. It's from the days Cal- of the witch trials. It, it, it's, it's from the, I, I've done a little bit of research, uh-huh. and it's from the 18th or 19th century. Okay. Okay, that could, okay, 18th. Or, or it's a reproduction of that time. The 18th century is the 1700s. Right. Right. You think that table could be from the 1700s? I think it could be from the late 1800s. I guess the, the witch trials were I, in the I, 1600s. I, what I'm thinking of is, right. you know, she, I, I'm thinking of it was maybe my grandmother's. Okay, okay. So I'm thinking maybe in our family it was around in the late 1800s. It also could be a reproduction of that time. Yeah, sure. But the style is apparently 17th century English. Okay, okay. It's a gate leg table with drop leaf. You know, well, if it's a gate leg table, it has drop leaves. But I was like, I wonder if this this would have a leaf, or we could put a leaf in this table and never make it bigger or uh-huh. something. And you know, this table has been in my attic for what ten, fifteen years now. Whatever, I, yeah. Since the Salem witch trials. No, I- yes, <laughs> since the Salem. Witch- <laughs> And we get it down, and we're cleaning it off because we're making this, trying to make this transition in our breakfast room. And I'm, th- I'm saying, let's see if this is worth, you know, keeping. I uh-huh. know it needs to be refinished. And I'm like, oh, look, it pulls apart kind of easy. Did it crack, or does it really pull apart? And we pull it apart, and there's this like gizmo in it. It that like the leaf is folded in half, but then yeah. the leaf like. You, flips over yeah, and then you it flip opens the leaf up, up and, and fold it over and, it, and it's like, oh man, <laughs> they did crap like this, you know. <laughs> it's so the leaf is stored, oh yeah, on a hinge mm-hmm. and it is hinged, yeah. So it folds down and comes up and folds we'll out. We'll post a video because you took that video. Yeah, I do have a video. We'll post the witchcraft video. We could do video. a better video if I did it with two hands eh, and you, you did know. the video, <laughs> but um. It was so purposeful. Okay, so this brings us to... It was so... Per- because it was purposeful and ingenious, you know, and um, efficient, okay? That's what I'm talking about, sewing furniture. And when sewing machines <laughs> were invented... Yes. 
for the home, when yeah. they first started coming to the home, they came in furniture. Yes, here, here's our segue. So, so. Th- this is what happened. People didn't, um, things weren't always considered portable. Right. But there was thought of how much space they took up uh-huh. and how efficient they could be. So a lot of early And they sewing, were often made of wood. Yeah. I mean, of, almost always furniture was made of wood. Right. Yeah. A lot of early sewing no machines plastics. come in a cabinet. Right. And they, like, um, I don't know that down. any didn't. You, you know, that might be something cool for us to research. I, 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 no, I honestly believe they all came in yeah. a cabinet. Well, because when I got my sewing machine in the 60s, uh-huh. they were still coming in cabinets. Okay, and sometimes those ones in the cabinets, they can't, like, they don't really stand up well free, like freestanding. They, okay. like, almost have to be in a cabinet, right? Okay. So the sewing machine that I bought in the, that my yeah. father bought for me in the 60s. Right can go in a cabinet like that. It has a hinge has on it. it. So how it's boxed up, like right. like the case it is in. Is like a table, right? Yes. yes. You have to, you actually, you know, hinge it up mm-hmm. out of the bottom of the case. The case never comes off of. So my point is. Yeah. My point is sometimes people are like, oh, there's this sewing machine with the cabinet. And it's like, well, they were, they were always together. It, well, almost like they that. Were, you know, they could have, Now we possible. do have. I don't know if that is that a singer or a Bernina. I you know, I don't know. We have one, I think it's a singer, that's in a wooden portable case. Yes. And we, we could try and um try and date that. that. Okay, let's let's yeah. get to sewing furniture. Right. <laughs> okay, so the sewing the So sewing furniture is not a new concept, no. is what we're trying to say. And so it used to be really essential to right. the storage to the to the workings well, of the sewing machine. And I think the other thing we have to look at is your sewing machine was n- more than likely not put away. Right. It mostly stayed out, but it might not have its own room, so it might be in a dining room. It might wind up being used like as a sideboard when you weren't actually working on it. Mm-hmm. But um, the sewing machine initially was like it was considered a home appliance a home almost necessity right it was like a vacuum cleaner or a washing machine is now or a microwave yeah, I'm thinking nowadays like, you know your refrigerator you know right right it was an appliance <clears throat> it's no longer considered that that's why you often see you know the suck and sews where right. they're selling vacuum cleaners and sewing machines in the same store is because it used to be considered a home appliance. And so it's this appliance that even in the olden days, people need to keep their kids out of or they need right. to put away or keep safe or keep covered from right. dust. So the sewing furniture, those cabinets that you see or that they used to make, you know, they don't right. really make, of course, I mean, I don't think anybody, modern manufacturer, is like making a sewing machine that bolts into a cabinet and selling that together. No, and you know like why? Like they used to. Because it became all very expensive. S- well, I imagine. do you remember people bringing their whole? Okay, so <laughs> when we note. when we had when we had a brick and mortar store and we serviced sewing machines and we serviced all brands, people would bring the whole cabinet in. Okay, guys, there's like two little screws. Yeah, just so you know. Okay, on a hinge, you undo them and you bring them in. First of all, no store has room for that cabinet. Right. Okay? And you just don't need to do that. And you don't need a moving van to have your sewing machine serviced. Right. <laughs> so just so you know, if you right. do have one of these in a cabinet, there are like two little set screws. Right. Just take a look where the machine is attached to the cabinet. You'll be able right. to take them off. Uh, so, yeah, they don't make them because they don't make them like that anymore. No one's manufacturing them like that anymore. And people wanted them to be portable. Well, and now they make a variety of cabinets, yes. and there's a variety of machines. Right. So you can get the combo you want. The other thing is, is oftentimes people bought a machine thinking it would last them a lifetime. Well, it probably did, and their lifetime was 50. Right. You know? <laughs> I mean, oh, I got the sewing machine when I got married when I was 18 and right. I died when I was 50 and it lasted me the whole time. Sure it did. You know. <laughs> well, and like, you know, we've talked about now there are, you know, there used to be like two machines, right? Like two models in a line or three right, models. Right, right, right. There might be, you know, three or four companies, but they had two types of sewing machines. And now the consumer, like you said, they will go through several machines in their lifetime. Right. 
for for various and, and reasons. And there's various reasons yeah. for that. Yes, yes, they want to upgrade um or, you know, there's a new feature and, you know, they're manufactured. They're they're more accessible. They're and because with the advent of plastic, mm-hmm. machines have been able to change shape and house the motor and keep it cleaner and out of the way and safer. Right. There's just all these things that have right. come. So let's real quick, let's say, I just want to get this part out of the way. Do you have to have specialized sewing furniture to be a successful sewing machine? You don't have to have anything. No. And so if you're not if you you know if you're not going to get specialty sewing furniture, right. I think it's important though. I, I want to say this. I want yes, I want to yes. talk about this. Like if you're not going to get, you know, something that's specialty sewing, let's say it's your first machine or you don't have room right. or da 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 da, you do need a sturdy work surface. And you need something that's ergonomic to your body. Yeah, the right height. Right. So the you know what's the worst? Tell them what's the worst thing to sew on is. Well, to me it's those Fold out tables. Yeah, those white fold out uh, plastic plastic tables. tables. They're great for picnics. They're great. We're using one for Thanksgiving right? and putting a big beautiful tablecloth on it. Um, but oh my gosh! So- well, first of all, they go up and down yeah, with the machine. They start to wave. They start to wave while uh, the machine's and, going. And we had an eight foot one at one. Well, we still have it. That's what mm-hmm. we're using for Thanksgiving. I don't know. I I I, get, I don't know if I bought that or Deatrid bought that. Yeah, I don't the, know. But the eight footer was uh, just amazing. It was like sewing on a surfboard. Right. You <laughs> riding the waves. Yeah, the... yeah, because you know, the six foot ones weren't nearly as bad as the eight foot ones. I feel ones. like it's almost better to sew on a little like card table than it is on that really well, long. Well yes, you know, the shorter the shorter, <laughs> the, shorter the leg the span, the better off you are. But um the stir now I still started sewing on a dining room table right. and I think a lot of people do and and they're often very sturdy. and certainly in the 60s the dining room tables were very stable yeah you know yeah. um and I sat in a dining room chair yeah you know in fact it did not ergonomically fit me correct and I would put okay another antique you ready uh-huh. a phone book what <laughs> <laughs> And I lived in a big city, so our phone books were three or four inches what thick. What is this phone book you speak and of? And we had a yellow one, and then we had, you know, the one with the picture of the city on the front, uh-huh. which was St. Louis. Had a, you know, eventually it had the arch on the front. But when I first got my machine, the arch did not exist. So you used to put your machine on a phone book? I, no, or your I put my pedal, pedal on, a, on phone a phone book, book. Okay. and I sat on a phone book. <laughs> I think I sat on a phone book with a pillow on it. So that you actually. could you could be up high. Yeah, well, because the machine I had to go to where the tall. machine was. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, and oftentimes we will do that with children. You know. Yeah. Um, how often have we put uh, a plastic box or something under the foot pedal? We still so have to that do the that child for you while we're filming. That's right. <laughs> we do. Mom's like, I can't reach this foot pedal. Right. You know. So you know. So oftentimes the foot pedal. You know, you can put a kid at a table and fit them, you know, to the machine or a short-legged person like me, um, and you have to bring that foot pedal up to them. Right, right. So that's important. So if you are, you know, if you are looking for something to sew on, get yourself something sturdy. Right. Try to get an adjustable chair. Yes. I think is a really You know, good everybody tip. says, how do you, you know. I change the adjustment of my chair sometimes for what I'm I'll sewing. I'll finish mom's sentence because yeah. she doesn't like to finish her sentences yeah. sometimes. Everybody says, what kind of chair should you get? You know, or what height should you be at while you right. sew? Mom's saying she likes to mix it up. It has to be changed sometimes. Yeah. I do not like arms on my chair. Mm. I find it confining. There are people that like arms on their chair. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are sewing machine companies or are cabinet companies that specifically make chairs and i've never found fault with I'm any of them I'm one right now and i'm not I hate that chair mallory that hates in. the chair i'm sorry it's, again it's an antique it's a wooden secretary's desk chair that i recovered it just happens to fit me real well but it's very hard to change the height you have to turn it to change the height you know you have, like the screw that so you have to Stand back and turn the seat around, I think we around, just around. Throw it away. No, I like it. <laughs> I like it. I use it all the time. Um, so, <clears throat> if you if 
if you, you know, aren't going to, you know, really research into right. the specialty sewing furniture of today or you're like, oh, do I have to have this or something, you know, those are the things that I think you should have a sturdy surface. Yeah. I like a back on my chair. Oh, I do too. Some people, some people do don't. not. Mm-hmm. And I do know some people that have issues with backs or legs or whatever yeah. their physical issue is. And they actually like walk in their chair. So, uh-huh. You know, they sort of use it like a wheelchair. Right, Like right. a pedestal that they're on. Yeah. Or um, we had a friend who had spina bifida and it was the crawligator. Yeah. That's what yeah. they called it. <laughs> so, you know, they sit on their chair and they walk with their feet so they don't have to stand up and down. Yeah. Um, if you can stand up and down, you should be. Okay. You should that, be. That's what you should be doing should be for yourself. A lot. Yes. Yeah. You should, if you're. In fact, you should be getting up and doing a down dog. Yeah, you know, you, you should, should be getting truly up and move your muscles, your back, your shoulders, you know, and your legs. If you can't, you need to accommodate that some way, probably. Yes, yes. But do being in the same position doing anything for too long is bad. And, 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 the, and the advent of machines that will sew with a button now uh-huh. instead of a foot pedal yeah. has been, we have had people in wheelchairs that have no leg movement, and that's been really an excellent thing that's happened for them. Uh, and for people who maybe they have leg movement, but like you said, I've seen people who want to sew standing up. And the and, start stop and, button is good for that. And certainly sewing up is an option. I like that a lot with embroidery. Standing up. Yes. Sewing up. <laughs> but oh, that could be up. a dip. I, I mean, like sewing up that's too. something. Sewing up. <laughs> but standing up and sewing and, and or I believe when we made the big drapes for um, yeah. True False, I uh-huh. was standing up with some of them. They were so big, so heavy. Yeah. It was nice to have them on the work table to this, work on this them. episode is just bringing back so many very vivid shop right. memories for me it is. i don't know why because we used to sell sewing furniture because we, i don't know what the deal like i don't know I don't why know. i'm just sharing that sharing okay. our experiences sharing. uh let's take a break i think and then talk about the marvels of modern sewing furniture if you don't have anything else to add about kind of like the history right and, the, and anything else you want to say about that before we move on all right you good you good mm-hmm. okay let's take a break this episode of sewing out loud is brought to you by la finch fabrics go to lafinchfabrics.com and use code ssw5 that's ssw and the number five to get five dollars off your order of 25 dollars or more through the month of november 2018 L.A. Finch Fabrics is your source for gorgeous designer ends and fabulous knits straight from the Los Angeles Garment District. They've been a Sewing Out Loud sponsor from the beginning, and our community raves about their fabulous customer service, not to mention the wonderful selection of fabrics. Go to LAFinchFabrics.com right after this episode to browse thermal knits, stripe packs, stretch wovens, and double brush polyesters. Oh, and don't forget, there's free U.S. shipping on orders over $99. Thanks, Thanks, L.A. Finch Fabrics. Sewing out loud. All right, and we're back. Okay, we used to be sewing machine dealers. We don't own everything. I would still be a sewing machine dealer if I was young and had a bunch of energy and had the store right outside my front door. I know. I'm like, Man, There's things I miss about it. I, I though, I think it's snowing today. Uh-huh. And I just took Zelda to school. And I'm like, I am kind of glad that I don't okay, have to Okay, but I, li- I kind of used to like the snow days yeah. at the shop because only the people who were really brave <laughs> came in. It's filtered. Yeah. It's filtered. <laughs> yeah. The people. Filter, filtered out the wusses, I guess. Uh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, I, no, there it are. It was always a crisp feeling or something, too. There and are some, some camaraderie things. about, like, being nestled in the shop, you there know, are out some of the snow. things that I, I miss as well. But right. then some things I so value about being able to record at well, home and do all I, this I home. believe we're more productive here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have actually have therapy after this episode. So, anyway, <laughs> uh, moving on. But we, we, have, we have seen... Okay, like the most advanced sewing furniture in the world. And okay. sewn on it and, and used it. And and it's really awesome. Mm-hmm. But there are different levels That's right. um, of sewing furniture yes. uh, that, that you can get. One thing, why a piece of sewing furniture might be rather expensive. And you always, you, you told me this. You taught me this. I want to hear what I taught okay. you. I wonder if I still believe it. <laughs> why Why people say, oh, my God, why is that so expensive? Like, why? I'm, I'm thinking of the, there was a piece by Koala. 
it was around, it was over $1,000, okay? Uh, it was their smallest piece, okay? Okay. Uh, and then there's a piece I know by Arrow that's kind of similar. Um, and you're like, well, what makes this so and a, and a lot of companies will have somewhat similar yeah, you know, similar. models or said, something comparable that you, you could. You always told me that what made them so, you know, much more expensive than just a normal table was the lift. The oh. sewing machine lift. So the lift on these on these sewing cabinets, what it can do is it can hide the machine away. That's correct. Or it can change the level at mm -hmm. which you sew. So you could be level with the entire table. Mm-hmm. Or you can lift it above the other part of the table and you have your free arm available. Yeah, so like just picture a sewing machine just like sitting on a table. Okay. Uh, but then if you have a piece of sewing furniture where it can sink down a little bit, you can sink the machine down and oftentimes they will uh, make available It's a custom to you insert. An insert right. that goes around your machine. And even if you have, like, let's say you have a machine that you just love, right. these inserts can be made for almost any right, machine right. out they there. They just ask the model of your machine. They have a template that will fit yes, this. Yes, yes. So like, you know, you're, you have a machine from long ago that you love and you want better right. furniture, you know. So you can also have this piece of furniture and you can have two or three machines and you can have three different templates. Oh, well, So know. you can use that that piece of furniture efficiently and to its greatest advantage with an insert that fits it. So the lifts are wonderful because they can do this. They can, um, you know, bring you up. You can, you can lift it up. You can put it on your embroidered unit. You can use your free arm. You can bring it down. And when it's level with the table, that's like having the world's most amazing extension that's table. That's what you want for right? things like bridal, quilting, quilting, anything that's voluminous. Yeah, big, big. Draperies, which I am never making again. Okay, I'm not saying that, that. Not that level of drapery. I'm saying that out loud, so I will never make them again. But you'll make like you'll make like a curtain for a kitchen window. Maybe. Oh, okay. No, no. I was just I, no, I would. But <laughs> but, but the lined, like pleated curtains, never foot again. Or whatever. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm leaving that up to eBay or something. <laughs> I don't know. Amazon, whatever. eBay, the place where you can get curtains. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, sure, I don't, Mom. <laughs> I don't know if they're on. I don't even know if they're on there. Sorry if I'm snappy and sarcastic. <laughs> I've been listening to this podcast. It's called My Dad Wrote a, and I'm not going to say the last word. So if you don't know what it is, you can just actually that's their Instagram handle, right? And it's just so funny. And there's this lady on it, and she's super snappy and oh, hilarious. Can I be on that? You've listened to it before. I know. I want to be on it. You I want to be, be on the snap. I want to be the snappy sewing really, lady. They have high class people. They I want to like, be the cynical sewing strategist. That's what you are. <laughs> you're you're there. You're there. Okay. So they have high class guests on there, like Elijah Wood and like famous people. What you think if we on called it. Elijah Wood? No, he would not. No, come he wouldn't come on. <laughs> I was gonna say, you think it's gotta be the, somebody. It's gotta be somebody of okay, some so notoriety just, that would forgive, come on. Right. Forgive my uh, snappy comebacks. I'm trying to be Alice from my dad wrote it. Okay, anyway, uh, so these lifts are great, but you know what? What I think would serve the needs of so many people who ask questions in our group. This, these two pieces of sewing furniture mm -hmm. that I'm talking about. Um, what, the koala one was called the cub. I think it's the a smaller piece. The arrow one is called the sonatra. Yeah. Okay, and. They will hide the machine for you, yes. and there's a lid that goes on top. There is a door that so closes. So like we just talked about before, if you don't have a specified sewing right. space room mm -hmm. all by itself, right? Right. Or even if you're in your guest room and your guest are, you know, it's your sewing room, you know, 360 days of the year. Yeah. <laughs> but five days of the year, the mother-in-law comes or granny comes or some, you know, the stepsister comes, whatever. whatever, you can close it up and sort of make it a piece of furniture. You can make it a side table. You can make, you know, whatever. It can. I have a really good idea. If someone needs to hire me to do this for them, maybe I shouldn't um, say it out loud, but I have this idea for like a stop motion sort of looking um, advertisement for one of these tables. Uh -huh. And it's, so it's, it would be just be like zoomed in on like the entryway of like a house or something. Uh -huh. And it, people would be walking by, uh, the camera would be stationary, and like <sighs> someone puts their keys on and it. And they don't leaves. know what and it is. Some, no, no, oh. no. It's not that they don't know, but like oh. it just shows it like a kid putting their books on it. Yeah. And they all leave, and then the, it gets opened up and used for sewing. And, and then like, put back. And then put back, and then it's used again. Yeah. And like seasons change and stuff. And anyway, sure. that's my idea for it. Oh, excellent. That's excellent. the sewing yes. furniture TV spot <laughs> that I have designed in my brain. <laughs> well, 
one thing that's kind of funny, and I hope I'm not um, regressing in this conversation, is the but we would get people would bring their sewing machine cabinets into us or something, uh-huh. or sometimes a sewing machine that we had to put to rest. Yeah, and they'd say, "Well, I don't want that cabinet." And guess what I would do? What would you do? I would bring it home. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we have bedside tables made out of sewing machine cabinets. We have end tables made out of TV sewing stands. machine cabinets. We have TV stands made out of sewing machine cabinets. We have desks made out of sewing machine cabinets. I just couldn't, like, throw away because some of these some were, of them are cool. nice pieces of furniture. Yeah, not of not all of them. Yeah. But some, some of them were actually nice pieces of furniture. Um and if you're into refinishing or painting or rehabbing furniture, this could work for you. Yeah, and I uh, the the one from Arrow flips out and gives you space right. to the left, and then also the door opens and has storage. Right. And okay, so the Koala Lift, it's electronic. Are it, all of theirs electronic? I believe so. Okay, they used to not all be electronic. I believe. Okay. Who, I think so. Okay. And so it has, they have remotes, okay? They have remotes also, (laughs) yes, they do. They have a remote. They have a cup holder, too. Or like a button. And a cup holder. They have a cup holder? I think so. I think they have a cup holder inside one of them. I don't remember that, but I believe you. It might not be for a cup, but (laughs) (laughs) it looks like a cup holder. So that one has like a button. Right. You know, okay. And then you'll find like hydraulic. So that one has to be plugged in, just so you know. You'll find like a hydraulic or an Uh airlift or something, and it's where you give it a little bit of pressure. Right. And And it comes up. raise up for right. you um so those are the two different uh and those the advent of those came around with the monster machines yes when machines started weighing you know over 40 pounds that's the the because i'm looking at one yeah i know <laughs> be, because the manual lifts with just a lever got very difficult okay. to lift and so there's the air lift there's right. the electronic lift and then you just said manual lift yes yeah, mm-hmm. so there are some cabinets where they just have like I mean, literally, it's just like a hinge where yeah, it will it's a, just it, yes, drop a absolutely. bit. absolutely. Obviously, those don't allow for, like, the subtlety of many machines and their depths, right? Yes, they do. Well, they have it. They're kind There's of There's an adjustment. There's usually... There's, like, the, a chain, We have right? one right here that has, like, a chain yeah, okay. that, that you can change the height okay. and the depth on. Yeah. Sorry, I misspoke there. Um, I, th- I think they all do. I've never seen one that didn't. And then you said big old machines. That were modern. Right. If you do get one of those uh, big, beautiful... Okay, let's talk about machines. price here. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait. Okay, okay. If you get one of those big, beautiful machines, right, you have to get a special, <laughs> a special lift that will handle. You gotta get the big lift, <laughs> the big Bertha lift. That's right. Okay, uh, okay. Talk about price. So, people would come in and they would buy a seventy-five hundred dollar machine, say, twelve thousand, twelve thousand, yep. whatever. You know, approaching like five numbers, right? Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> Five digits, I guess. you, And then we would show them a cabinet. Right. That would be maybe $3,000. Right. Right? And if I'm wrong on these prices, you can tell me. But oh, I think that's it, three, right around. Yeah. Three, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And generally, we would package this, too, for them. Well, if you buy this machine today, sure. you know, we will give you 15 20% off on this. Because it was easier for us. Yeah. As far as servicing and everything right. else, if they bought it at the time, that's why we would package it. Right. You know, and it was advantageous to the customer. Uh, same goes here as buying a, a trolley for your machine if you're going to take it anywhere. And they would say, $3,000. And I would think, you just bought a $12,000 machine. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you, granted, you know, I, get, I, mean, I mean, I get it. I mean, I, I know it. it's money. Right. I, I know, and I know maybe there's not money. And, and they're like, well, I'll just sew on a desk, or I'll just sew on this, or I'll just sew on my husband's, oh, big thing, computer desk. Okay. Just so you know, even the resale shops in our town won't take computer desk anymore. <laughs> That's right. They won't. Because they're crap. So anyway. <laughs> no, I, I, well, I remember going and helping people. We had a floor model sale for our sewing machine furniture. Um. And I have just seen, by the way, before you email us, we are not like what money shaming anyone. No, you know? no, no, no. But these can be so useful. And I, we would have a floor model sale and I would deliver the furniture to someone, my least, one of my least favorite parts of being a <laughs> being dealer, a dealer with yes, delivering very heavy sewing furniture. Um, when you buy it new, it comes to you. There's delivery service. Right. Um, anyway, so so 
I would see people with the big machines or even right. medium-sized machines, and they would be like, oh, I'm so relieved that now I have right. this dedicated piece of yes. furniture because they were on a dining room table or they were on right. something subpar, and it was really affecting their sewing experience. Right. You know, and I'm not saying it's going to happen for everybody. Well, but... and, and we, I mean, I think you're right about the money shaming. We're not saying everybody has no, this kind of money. Of course not. I'm just saying, think about what you're doing. Mm-hmm. and. Maybe you don't have the three thousand dollars for for the cabinet, but don't be shocked. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean it. It is a good value. Yes, and you so, know it is a good. It truly and it will last forever. Yeah, the, I mean it's not something that that's that's not going to last or not going to serve you, and if you sew a lot, you know it's it's just well worth it. The ergonomics of it is amazing and what for your body for your efficiency so, some of the higher ends will allow you to customize height like they're custom yes. built so yes. they don't build them until you order them that's so right you you want a 36 right. inch you want a 42 inch you know a high sewing cabinet whatever that can be customized um like you said the machine inserts hey i would do you prefer a I machine do, you're gonna ask insert this. that is oh. opaque or clear Actually, I like the clear one. Uh, me too. So I can stick my hand in there and do the bobbin stuff without. That, or, that's why I like it. I will put, set a pair of scissors on the machine platform. I, that's exactly or right. You can put things, or you can put things under there that you're actually yeah, using. Yeah, that you'll see. Um, I like that. Okay, I have a question for you. I think I know the question. Do you prefer a wood grain that matches the rest of your furniture, or do you prefer white? I prefer white. And so does her mother. Because my mommy taught me that. Yeah, we really do like white furniture. And But, again, we have a designated sewing yeah. area. No, that's very if, true. If, if, yeah. if I was in a smaller home and I was using my dining room and mm-hmm. I was someone who entertained and, you know, um, was going to use this as a sideboard or a piece of inconspicuous furniture right. and didn't want to. My Did upper we'll- echelon friends to know I sewed my own clothes. <laughs> whatever, whatever I'm, Try whatever hide, I'm, whatever hide. I'm pretending to be at the time. Um, I may want a wood grain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, it can it can have a tablecloth. Yeah, you can sew a you cover. You can make a tablecloth. That's right. I mean, but um, I prefer white. I prefer the my walls in my studio to be a white or off white. Because um, you can see color better. Yes, right? if my if my room is red, all of my fabric is going to have a pink tinge. Right. If right. it's blue, it's gonna you know. So having neutral where you're sewing, and if you're worried about color or anything, that that's important to me. You know, we discussed. I painting. also like the idea of white. I think it feels light and open. We discussed the idea of painting this wall. Now all of our walls are kind of like half walls, and then have the gabled ceilings. You know about painting that, like the so here green, like the so here uh-huh. teal, and I'm like, I don't know, it right. might kind of greenify. It might greenify stuff. What's it's going a, on? Absolutely right. Now we thought about painting it the teal with like gold splatters on yeah. it. I think we could still do just gold splatters. I on think the white. we could make it Swarovski crystals. Oh, and okay. I'd be fine with it. It'd too. be even more reflective. Yes. It would show more light. We need Swarovski crystal wallpaper. Okay. I swear, I buy a pile of poop if you put a crystal on. it. <laughs> You, or, I, I'm a magpie. I don't know. Okay, uh, maybe we should. Get, <laughs> I guess furniture. we should get back to sewing furniture. Uh, so you can oftentimes adjust the height of sewing right. furniture, or order it custom, or something like that. Now, right now we have furniture that does not close up, that does That's not right. hide our machines mm-hmm. because we leave our machines out. That's right. Um, we do have one table that's convertible in the sense that it has a leaf that goes up and back. Yes. So it can you know, it can be double wide. You'll to have support these something. different levels of convertibility and hiding and you can just buy I've heard people like they really want like the throwback to just like it's just a table with that lever. And that's about what that's we nice... have, kind of. We just have accessories on it. Right. That's like that sturdy, you know, table. And then mm-hmm. So I want to talk about storage. Mm-hmm. Um, different sewing furniture will offer different levels of storage. That's right. Um, I love these vertical thread cabinets that everybody's putting in their sewing furniture now. Like, by everybody, I mean mm-hmm. the brands. Mm-hmm. Like where you can pull it out yes. and see, and it's all there yes. and it slides back in. I think that those are so cool. Okay. You want to know what I 
don't like? What do you not like? Are there something I don't like, I, too? I, let's see who I'll I'm going you. to offend. <laughs> you know the craft cabinets you see, and they close up, and they look like a wardrobe? Yeah. And then you open them up, and a table flops down. Yeah. Or folds down. Gate it leg, flops. Gate, gate leg flops. table. You know, and then... Oh my God! In the ads, it looks so fantastic. Everything is it. First of all, wouldn't even hold like <laughs> you know a teaspoon of the crap I have. Okay, but you have okay. It it's not that efficient. I think it's some aspirational marketing, is what yes, I think. Yes, yes. It it if you really, really, really think about it, it doesn't do that. And that table is not. Real stable. I don't okay. think it's for It's sewing. also not adjustable. I think it's for paper crafts. Like that would be it. good. But I have seen it, you know, like advertised, advertised for sewing, sewing or yeah. crafts. Or, and, you know, then and here's the other thing. Like I said, and I'm not in the space you are. If you have to absolutely pristinely clean up every time and, you know, unfold and, you know, lay out then the area you want and then fold up. You, you've just wasted 30 minutes of sewing time. Right. Now, I'm not saying you might not need this. Mm -hmm. Or you might not have another okay. idea. You can have an opinion about that cabinet, Mom. Yeah. You, you have I it. just think, and they're, I find, talk about expensive. I think they're expensive for what they are. I don't know how much they are. Um, I, I don't remember, but I remember looking and going, wow. You know, that's a one-use thing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you close it up, you can't use it for anything else. Right. It's, it's like cabinet. Yeah, it's like well, like two doors in it, your you know, you know I'm room. Sure, I'm sure it could work for somebody. Uh, I'm just saying I think they look better than they are. Right. Yeah. Talk about rolling things around. So when we had this sewing yes. store, oh, my God, I did something else. Well, that's a thought. Talk about built-in cabinetry. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. I know. You're yeah. going to have some opinions about yeah, that. Yeah, I got some opinions. Uh, everything could roll around, like all of our koala, right. you know, and uh, studios and all of the furniture we had from and other people, brands. And we used to roll them around. We used to roll them around. Um, and so that was very handy to be able to move that stuff. And some of it did close up all the way. Some of it didn't. Right. Um, they had lovely, deep, soft-closed drawers on them. That was very nice uh, as well. But, yeah, go ahead and um, go on your built-in cabinetry rant. Do it. Built-in <laughs> cabinetry. <laughs> First of all, it will be the it, standard height. It's not like cabinetry height will be probably incorrect for you. Right. You will have to lower it if you're using, like, kitchen cabinetry. If mm -hmm. you're not using, like... Um, Okay, and a lot of times what people do is they will line the walls, you right. know, so this countertop is up against their wall. Well, that limits your space behind your machine. Uh-huh. Okay. Not good for embroidery. Not not, not good for bridal. Not, not good, good for, yeah, for big sure. quilts. Not good for repairing uh, boat covers. Not, let, let, may I go on? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just telling you that I just, you know, and I have seen these rooms and they look great. But then if you go to work in them, and how I figured this out was working in a school that had one. And uh. I was like, this sucks. <laughs> okay. And they even had like a table that pulled out from the, like underneath, like a cabinet where the table pulled out. And I still didn't like it. But um, up against the wall, not being able to move out if you don't want to. Um, and you're stuck with a configuration. Yeah. Now, here's what I know, and here's what I've seen with people that sew. People that sew are clever, they're <laughs> creative, and they don't stay in one place. Right. They don't plateau. They keep on Growing. investigating and going, oh, maybe I can do that. So your sewing today might not be what your sewing is in five years. Man, tell yep. me about that with this jacket I'm finishing. Ex Yes, Ooh. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> From five years ago yes. or whatever. <laughs> um, so, you know, built-in is scary to me. I don't build anything in. Um, and believe me, I went through the process of thinking about it. I want to make sure everything I have can be reconfigured. How many times have we reconfigured this studio in two years? Yeah, a lot. Like three or four times. I mean, and sometimes it's just moving one thing. But... 
you know, a different machine, a different project. Well, and the studio um, has changed from Is being... more than one person going to wind up right. sewing? Do you, you know, there, there's all these. Or do you want a corner that is... I used to have a glue and paint corner. <clears throat> like, that right. way it stayed away from... The fabric. The fabrics, you know, and uh, things like that. So... Everything's – how many hooks do we have in the ceiling for moving – Right. Okay, so <laughs> when I used to do a lot of bridal, I had hooks over every machine. So now we have hooks over every inch now of the – Now you can, you can tell, oh, there used to be a machine over there. You know. Oh, I wonder what she did over there. There's a hook there. There's a That's swivel right. hook there. There's, oh, right. there's a hook and a chain there. Oh, there's another bicycle hook over there. So – I have no problems with adding hooks to ceilings. I think they're magnificent. No, because we can still use those, right. too. And then you always have your – that's that's what's nice about the IV pole. It moves around. Yeah, lots of things and on the And you can, you can have – so you can have something on the IV pole, be working on it on one machine, and then just take the IV pole over to the other machine. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. yeah, that's good, too. Um, so built-ins, really, really, really think about it. And it, I think now you may want something built in. Now our closets don't even have shelving, shelving in yeah. or rods in them. We they're big open closets that you we use what is called a Z bar in, which Z-rack. is a yeah. Z rack, which is a a professional um, clothing rack. Right, it's right. very strong, very sturdy. You can you know you we can probably have an affiliate link. We on. probably have an affiliate <laughs> link for that. But that's the kind you want because it'll hold tons of things, and you can still move that rack around too. Right. Um, and closing things in is a mistake, I believe. Putting doors on things if you don't have to, because if you can't see it, you don't know what it is. And if you put it in a box or you put it in a container, you need to label it. Sewing furniture will make you happy. I, I guarantee you. Yeah. If it's something that I think it answers a need, if you are looking to really, you know, you talked about having to clean right. up and stuff. Like right. if you're trying – I think about Jen, and I we, we mentioned her in Have a Place Where You Can Sew. And she's actually shared a picture of her space, I think, on Instagram, um, where it's in her kid's playroom. You know, now her kids, I think, are old enough to, like, right. leave it alone, you know. But but Fred's is in a laundry room, isn't it? Oh, my it? God. Fred – Actually, she was extremely she's efficient. Gonna, she's writing a blog post for us. I don't uh-huh. know if it'll be published by oh, the time okay. this is done, but she's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, Fred wrote the Fred. Fred has done her tiny sewing room, uh, but I think that a couple of these cabinets could be so useful for those people with that limited space. Right. So you know, I think we sort of talked about there is this like luxury end of the sewing yes. furniture, but and, then there's this like highly practical, you right. know. Um, and sort and, of and I think the other thing too. that we want to make sure we include is a cutting area, and some yeah. of these cabinets, yeah, are cutting height, so they're stand up height, yet you can still sew on them, and they have the lift in them, and then the other side of them is a cutting area, yeah. Or you can have, you know, a cutting table, like the gate leg cutting tables are excellent because right. they fold down. You're not always cutting. You can have. The whole table or a third of the table or two-thirds of the table There's up. also, there's some sewing furniture that's like, okay, they have these cutting tables with like lots of storage underneath, yes. which I think and, is great. And you will see people take something like two or three bookshelves or yeah. cabinets or something and put, um, you know. Counter on top r- of them. Right, but put what we call building goods on top. Yeah. Say a layer of uh, plywood with, mm-hmm. now, okay. Let's talk about my very first, my second sewing setup. Okay. <laughs> As an adult, in my basement, I had a four by eight piece of plywood on sawhorses. That was my cutting table. That you know what? That was my cutting I table. I think that you know, really, the luxury in sewing is often the space. It's the space. It's the space. A lot of the and time. then I sewed on a teacher's desk. Is what I call it. It was the big, mm-hmm. heavy. Okay, it did not vibrate. Right, right. It did not vibrate. Big, heavy, heavy, you know, teacher's desk. Lots of drawers had the pull-out things on the side. You right. know, the pull-out writing little whatever they were called. I don't, I, yeah, yeah, I, I don't even know what know they're, they're called. called. <laughs> but, um, and it really did work for me. Yeah. Okay, it really did. And I had, a, a like, a secretary's, you uh-huh. know, chair. And this was in my basement. And then I built what was called the plastic room for the kids. Sounds safe. So, uh, (laughs) yeah. 
so what I did is I studded out sort of a room with two by fours, right? And it came off the bottom of the stairs. And I made sure there was a, a, a heating vent that went into it. And then I just stapled clear plastic, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. by this vinyl, clear vinyl all the way around this room. And I even had a plastic door where you like pulled the, you know, you, and right. it was held together with magnets. And the kids played in the plastic room and I was right outside and I could see them while I sewed. It was excellent. You know, we have kind of a little spot for Zelda. Right now she likes right. to play on top of the cutting table. Yeah. <laughs> she can still stand up on the cutting table and not hit the ceiling or the ceiling you know, fan. I got those Halloween costumes finished because she sat there and cut fabric right. with scissors. I mean, I really did. She did a, re- a great job. So having a little kid area might not be bad. <laughs> well, well, we always had a box for everybody with their name on right, it. And, right. you know. Okay. So sewing furniture, don't write it off completely. No. And Explore your options because your right. needs might be different from someone else's. So if you're saying, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm not buying a $3,000 sewing piece of right. furniture. But think stable. Yes. You know, if okay, and height is important, and you can change height. There right. are things you can buy to put under your desk. There are things you, you can you can saw things off. There's mm-hmm. there's all, you know, you can set it on cinder blocks. I mean, there are ways to change the height of things, and don't hesitate to do that if that's what you need to do. Right. Because it will make such a difference. It will make you be able to sew for a longer amount of time. Absolutely. All right, well. If you have any questions about sewing furniture, you can send them on in. Uh, we we can um, follow up with those. But yeah, it's it's a it's a universe that is worth spending a bit of time exploring as you sort of progress and, in your sewing you know, journey. like I said, I've gone through all of those different stages, and I will say I was happy when I got to the point I could afford to get so, yeah. sewing furniture. Yeah. It, it's made specifically for what it's supposed to I do. I would say it kind of like reminds me of embroidery software. Like you could kind of see a customer's journey yeah. unfolding. Sure. You know, you could see like, oh, they're going to be happy with this for a while because right. this is what they're going to be able to do. And then they are going to stretch their mind and right. their abilities. And they're going to want to do, you know, this thing. So anyway, I just, I thought it was good to do a topic on that. Embroidery software, that's a topic we have not. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Well, you can follow us on Instagram. We are so here calm at so here calm, and you can join us in our Facebook group, the Self Sewn Wardrobe. Uh, Z, so long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit sewhere.com.